One. Hi guys, and welcome to episode three of Castmock Youth Complex's very own podcast, The Milk Crown. Uh, this week we'll be doing something a wee bit different. Um, so our topic is music, and we luckily have a guest who's going to come on with us. Um, and you're probably watching this on a, I should mention that first, you're probably watching this on a YouTube, um, but there are other social medias you can get us on, uh, different platforms, so you can get us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Chris, do you have the list there? For oh, I do. Oh, I do. <laughs> We're uh, getting good at this. I know, hopefully, yeah, getting good. Uh, on Facebook, it's Kelly Youth Complex Staff, Twitter, Youth Complex CYC, Instagram, Youth under slash Complex, and TikTok, Kelly Youth Complex. And if you're watching us now on YouTube, then please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. Yep. And if you want to send us something directly, then the email address is cycyouthteam at gmail.com. Yep. We're always looking for wee questions, and I think we've got a couple tonight uh, yeah, from this, different people. This is going to be our most interactive podcast yet. I'm really excited about this week's podcast, to be honest. Yeah. Well, I've not been excited about the other two, but... I'm, I'm really excited oh, it's, how it's, different it's, this one is. It could be fraught with errors because we've got a guest Aye. in our waiting room as we speak and we're hoping that it's all, we're just going to be able to bring them seamlessly into the conversation later on. Fingers uh, crossed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just going back to, so if you remember the first week, we, I told you about the names in the poll we had and it was Cyclone versus Milk Round. Milk Round won, so you've probably seen it on our YouTube that Episode one is Milk Round 1, Milk Round 2, and then this will be Milk Round 3. I've looked up Milk Round because we had a wee discussion on, was that a thing before? Mm -hmm. And I think you said it was possibly a newsletter or a newspaper that went round cast milk. Something like that, that's what I thought. Was I wrong? You were right. Was I right? right. Oh, I right. Uh, there you go, champion. Uh, it was a, the one that I found, I couldn't find actual information on it, but it was um, archives of this newspaper, put mm -hmm. on a Casmo community page on Facebook. Um, so uh, that's it's quite good knowledge. Well done, Chris. I, so you're not going to give my age away too far by telling me when I'll not say where it was from. Uh, was. Yeah, no. No, I had a very vague recollection of, of it. So, um, so copyright um, inquiries to cyc at gmail, cyctm at gmail.com, yep. any grievances. And we'll let Fraser deal with that one. Um, we'll just, ah, yeah. No one has. <laughs> or in the, in the junk mail pile, sorry. We never saw it, you know. We'll see. So as I say, this week is on music, but last week, we'll just give you a wee rundown. If you didn't catch that, please do go check it out. Last week's episode and our first episode. But last week we had more of a news-based episode. So we're speaking about things that were happening in the news and in society. So we had a discussion on the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, due to the death of George Floyd over in uh, America. Uh, and that went quite well, the discussion we had about it. Uh, it got staff speaking about it as well, I think. Um, we, had our, we had our team meeting today and a few people were speaking about um, the protest that went on in Glasgow Green on Sunday as well, um, which was good to see our, our city coming together, doing something like that. And I heard a lot of reports that people were socially distancing and keeping safe at it. Um, which was great. Um, so this week, as I say, is music, but we've got a couple of things to do before we get into that, um, which is the, the favourite section of our fans so far, your section. Before we um, start, I've actually got, I did say that this was the most interactive uh, podcast we've got. So I've actually got a question from oh, one right, of our so members, uh, Chris, who, um, funny, just by by. Uh, coincidence is also a Chris um, so and it was quite actually quite a serious point I thought it was quite a good thing to kind of just have a very brief chat about it was asking any kind of hints of protecting your mental health during quarantine and I think that's okay. something that we have touched on in kind of previous podcasts we've yeah. alluded to things like um, you know getting a bit of exercise or at least getting out of the house but um, yeah. I checked out, I did a wee bit of research when we got that question, and if you search on Google for Every Mind Matters, uh, it's an NHS website, and they've got some really useful uh, tips and stuff. Uh, exercise, one that's mentioned, 
staying connected with others. So the way we are talking on on uh, Zoom right now, um, or other there are other messaging services available out there as well that you can do very similar things with. Um, that was the one thing. And have a read through yourself. Every mind matters uh, on the NHS website, but that was one of the things I picked out. But I thought one of the kind of most useful things was um, establish a new normal, basically. So things aren't going to maybe return to what they were previously anytime soon. And no. we have to maybe accept that. Um, so it's about finding that new normal and setting a new kind of routine in your life as well. Yeah. And accepting yeah, that happens. So there are a few things that I would say, but please, uh, if things are getting too much, don't feel that you can't go and see your doctor during this. Uh, one of the kind of common things that I'm hearing is that uh, doctor surgeries are actually quite quiet right now because people okay. aren't coming out. And I would say that not just for mental health, anything that is potentially concerning, go and see your doctor. Yeah, but if it is getting too much, please go and see your doctor. That is what they are there to help you uh, do. But these are just general things if you're just feeling a bit down, um, a bit of exercise getting out. But there's loads of other really useful yeah. advice on that website. Yeah, definitely. I think we could probably share that on our social medias then, um, yeah. that, that page that comes up with the NHS. Um, and as you says, I think there was a um, Scottish government advert that came out and it was people saying, oh, I'm not really want to go to the doctor because they're busy right now and things yeah. like that. But like you says, it's, if you are worried about something health-wise, um, physical or mental, then go and, go and seek advice or help. Um, and I had actually skipped over something in my plan as well, so that's two things. So I'm doing really well. I think I'm too excited. I think that's what it is. I'm just excited about something being different. Um, so I'm going to do news article from this week as well um, because we touched on the news last week and in episode one we were speaking about the news um, mm -hmm. and we thought we'd try and bring a nice news story through our podcast every week um, something that will make you smile or um, give you a wee bit of joy at this kind of hard, hard time just now uh, so the headline for the one I found was coronavirus Ipswich hospital staff and friends sing for key workers so it was a group of singing friends who, um, two of them are actually hospital staff right now with the NHS. Uh, they recorded a video, um, they covered McFly's song, Shine a Light. Um, you're quite familiar with McFly's work, aren't you? Uh, yeah, member of, the fan, fan. member of the fan club, actually, and you know. You went yeah. to the McBusted concerts as well. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they had done this just to spread a wee bit of cheer on social media. Um, and it actually got more than 20,000 Facebook views within days, and it was featured on BBC Radio Suffolk. Um, and that is on the BBC News website as well, and you can go on and check that out. And these guys are in, like, it looks like a Zoom meeting, and they're singing a song, and it's, it's just something quite cheerful just now, whilst everyone's finding it a wee bit hard. Um, and that was our article of the week. Um, and another thing that came from the news this week is what, Nicola Sturgeon was saying about going into phase two possibly next week. Um, so that is quite a nice thing to hear about as well because mm -hmm. it loosens a lockdown for us a wee bit more like it did the first time. Yeah. Um, it's just making that a wee bit easier for everyone. Um, so keep an eye out for that. We'll be updating everyone on what's happening on our social medias. We'll be giving like a, a lowdown on the lockdown, if you will, mm -hmm. um, on our social medias. A lot of information for young people and for parents as well, just on what's happening with maybe schools and education and things like that, and what's happening in the community. That could be a new section, Lee. The lowdown on the lockdown. Low down the I lockdown. think you've just stumbled on, to stumbled on a new section there, but a cracked one. Yeah, right, right. and I think I like what I think um, when, uh, when and if phase two is um, enacted, for lack of a better term, then we will do another thing similar to what we did when phase one and we'll try and break it down into plain English so that yeah. everyone can go, right, what is it actually I can get away with and stuff. So yeah. we'll do that in a future podcast probably. Mm -hmm. But there's no point in going through it now because it, it's no there, no. no there either. No. I think it really helped um, a lot of people when you've done that uh, with phase one. So hopefully we can do the same, as you said, in the future for phase two. And hopefully it's not too far away, guys. Mm -hmm. Um, we're getting quite close to it being listened and restrictions being out of the way. Um, so 
keep your head up and check out our social medias for all the help that you, that you need. So now we can get to that section that I was eagerly trying to get to. Your, my favourite section, fans' favourite. Your section, what's on my telly and what's on my belly. Um, so who's going first this week? Uh, well, you went first last week, so I'll go first this week. How about that? Okay. Yeah, so, so I will start with what's on my telly, and probably there's going to be a kind of recurring theme here, and I'm giving away my kind of geek status, which I'm quite, <laughs> right. happy, to, quite happy to give away. But this week's what on my, what's on my telly is The Expanse. It's available on Amazon. Uh, it's basically set 200 years in the future, and they're basically... Um, humans have colonized large bits of the solar system uh, and it's basically for example Mars and stuff like that and Mars has subsequently in the story declared independence from Earth so there's a bit okay. a, there's a bit of a political thing going on as well the thing that impressed me most was that the science behind this program is absolutely spot on right. it's a the very accurate um, it's a very accurate kind of interpretation of a the kind of the kind of places we would colony colonize in the solar system, and also the technology isn't too far away from what we've got now. They're just advancements on what we kind of currently have. Right, okay. so quite a realistic, I think, a realistic depiction of the future, you know. Um, yeah. And it's it's some really good telly. I was gutted when it got cancelled on its original Sci-Fi Network. Uh, only to be heartened by the fact that Amazon bought it over uh, right. uh, to yeah. make another season. And as far as I know, there will be new seasons, but there's currently four seasons up on Amazon, highly bingeable, uh, some really gripping, very accurate sci-fi for me. Is that, um, what, what kind of age range is it aimed towards and what kind of genre lovers or what? It's, 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 it's going to be it's going to be sci-fi, but if you like a wee kind of a political kind of thriller type thing, and even if you don't like sci-fi, there is a lot of that in it, so right, okay. it's not too out there. It's quite a yeah. grounded approach to sci-fi, in my opinion. You know? Would you say our young people are able to watch it? Like. Are younger yeah. young people? Yeah. Uh, no, I would say it's, it's probably you're talking maybe our kind of mid range, you know. Okay. So we're talking about a fifteen. Um, right. Yeah. But it's too good not to recommend. So unlike nice. last week where I was going with a kind of something that was kind of good and fun, this one that just came to me when I was thinking about it. I was going, no, no, this is some really good stuff. So Brilliant. get it, get it watched. The expense. So, uh, we do you want to talk about Taylor, or do you want me just to go seamlessly leading on to what's um, in my belly? It's up to you. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go for my Taylor option then. Go what's for in it. My belly? Um, so this week, we have been watching Louis Theroux documentaries. Now, we watch we go in and uh, watch Louis Theroux documentaries. He's brilliant. He's just great at what he does, the way he interviews people, and he gets right into the nitty-gritty in the way he gets... Gets his hands dirty, basically, he goes in to the situation that he's speaking about, and you learn so much because he asks the question that I don't think other interviewers would ask. Um, so, we've been watching quite a lot of his episodes, and they're available on uh, all four uh, Netflix, BBC iPlayer. I think, he, I think he's on quite a lot of different platforms. We've been watching them on BBC iPlayer, um, and there's all different types all the way through shows as well, uh, documentaries. So there's the Weird Weekends, which are wacky, like some of the people that he thinks uh, with that. There's the Altered States, which are a bit darker. Um, they speak about drug abuse in certain cities in America, certain states. Um, and then one that we watched uh, yesterday was the Transgender Kids. Um, I learned quite a lot from that, I would say, uh, that I didn't already know. Um, I think in our job we're always learning about how society is changing and how um, people are fighting for their rights every day and I didn't really understand a lot of the science behind it and I didn't understand at what age young people can feel that they are transgender, they're in their own body. 
Um, so I thought that was a great episode to watch, and it would probably be my recommendation for a for a first episode to watch because it eases. It's not too hard to watch, but it's also quite informative. Um, so yeah, Louis Theroux. I don't know if you've seen any Louis Theroux. I've s- over the years, definitely seen it, and I think. Um, I think there was one point, and this is probably quite current now, is he, he was talking about uh, people owning big cats. So he did speak to Joe yes. Exotic from Tiger King in he his did, show. Yeah. And I think probably the kind of similarities would end. But if you've any of watched Tiger King on Netflix now, that's definitely not a, that's an over 18s kind of viewing yeah. kind of, uh, thing. But um, that Louis Theroux, this, Tiger King is probably based on in Louis Theroux's kind of format. The thing yeah. is, I would say Louis Theroux achieves and executes it a lot better than, yeah, I think than so. say, Tiger King. Tiger King was just so outrageous, the story, yeah, I, that that kind of carried it. But I think if you see Tiger King, element, yeah. if you like Tiger King, then watch Louis Theroux because there's some weird and wonderful subjects also that yeah. he kind of covers, but also some really hard-hitting, important subjects, as you kind of mentioned. Yeah, uh, just read the information before you watch an episode. It might be too hard. Me, me and Brooke have actually stopped ourselves from watching an episode if we're not in the right mm-hmm. uh, mindset yeah. to watch a certain thing um, because they are quite emotional sometimes. And like Chrissy's recommendation, mine's is probably for mid-range young people and higher, so 15 and higher, I would say, mm-hmm. Louis Theroux um, aims towards. So that's what's on my telly. So what's... In my belly, more importantly, Lee. That so, what's currently in my belly? So, I took a bit of a cue from you last week. I actually ended up taking the kids for a drive through McDonald's today. Now, this isn't what my official what's in my belly. Okay. So I wouldn't, wouldn't go there. And I have to say, 11, 12 weeks, and I do not miss it a bit. It really? was awful. The Is chips wrong? were tepid. Oh, it was, I was just like, I, I feel. You know, like sometimes when you you get something like that, you feel like you've been cheated out your lunch. No, I get that's you. what I felt. So, yeah. So, no, no offense to McDonald's, but must do better. Govern Hill oh. McDonald's must do better. Offense to Lee for the recommendation. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, but more importantly, what's actually been in my belly for the last week or so is a lovely cream of asparagus soup, Lee. Right. Cream of asparagus soup. Now. It just so happens, I, th- I believe asparagus is in season, so it's actually quite cheap because normally okay. asparagus is quite expensive to buy. This is a, a, a soup that is probably a wee bit more difficult than just bung it all in a pan and boil it up. For me to get the best results, I'm going to chop an onion, I'm going to fry it off a bit, then I'm going to chop the asparagus and fry that off covered kind of like sauteing it, keep, no, make sure it's covered, keep it all in, add a bit of butter, add a bit of corn flour into it, and then okay. add it back and stock and thicken up because it's not enough uh, just to boil up the vegetables and that's thick enough. You need a bit of corn flour in there to make the soup thick enough. So you boil that for about half an hour and get, if you've got one of those electric whisks, all the better. Zoom it up, as I call in the business. That's the technique. Zoom it up. Zoom it up into a, and add a wee bit of cream at the end. And it is one of my favourite soups, to be quite honest. And it, it might not be something everyone's got in their, in their uh, fridge, but really all you're needing is some asparagus. And okay. if you've already got cream, if you've not got cream, use a bit of milk. It's close yeah. enough as far as I'm concerned. Um, but most of the other ingredients you'll have anyway. So... And it's got the added bonus, and most people know this already, it makes your pee smell weird after you've ate it. <laughs> That's why you've made it, isn't it? <laughs> just purely, even if, you, even if you don't make it just for the joy of eating it, just for science, just to <laughs> confirm, it does make your pee smell weird after you've okay. eaten it. Okay, thanks very much for the update on that. <laughs> So that's what's in your belly. So you said it's been in your belly all week. Have you been having it quite a lot? Is it just? I made it. I think I made it twice this week. So right, okay. yeah, it's it doesn't last long. It doesn't go that far. So you don't get much out of it. Mm-hmm. But it's yeah. And have you had you made it before lockdown, or did, was it something you learned in lockdown? Oh, it's something that I'd already been able to make before. Right. But it was just being in the supermarket and seeing it on the specials. Uh, yeah. That that's what kind of spurred me on to doing it. Brilliant. Look at this. What's in um, your belly, Lee? 
What is in my belly, Chris? That is a good question, especially for this part of the podcast. Um, what's in my belly? So, Stacey at the Youth Complex is very good at coming up with new things to eat and she's always online and bringing our experiments of food into the, the Youth Complex for the young people to try. And she often makes PD pizzas. Uh, pita pizzas. All right, even. cool. Pita pizzas. Yep. And then I seen a video last week of a person making a tortilla pizza. And I thought, I want a bit of that. So it's pretty simple. It's a tortilla wrap. It's uh, a wee bit of tomato puree or tomato sauce, mozzarella, and then your toppings in the oven. Easy as that. And it is brilliant. So it is, I wouldn't say it's a dinner, but it's a, a maybe a snack or a lunch or something. And obviously you can choose your own toppings. You can try different cheeses with it. Um, but I really tasty. You could even try different bases, I suppose, can you? You could try barbecue sauce as your base. Yeah. Um, or sweet chili sauce or something like that. But I that's that's what's in my belly and that's my recommendation for you guys to try out. Um and if you need any of the recipes or anything like that, we can get them on for you. Uh, just mm-hmm. give us a message on our social social media platforms. And we, and we should also just say, based on your recipe, that other bread items are available in the shops, just in Aye. case. And I'll say for my soup that other vegetables are also available in shops. Yes. Just, just for compliance go. reasons. Aye. <laughs> uh, so, I think around about this time, we're going to try and work the kind of wizardry of science and bring our guests in. Aye, we're um, going to do talk the podcast things. Music. Hopefully. So, <laughs> so we're going to bring in Maya, who is a member of the music group, um, long-standing member, showing a lot of progression. But let's let's try this and see if it works first. Okay. There we go. Drum roll, please. Is this by magic? Oh, there she is. Hey. Oh, hello, <laughs> Maya. So, uh, we'd just like to say that we are actually recording. So, uh, no, none of those swear words that you normally go in <laughs> for or anything like that. Um, so, we've just been chatting a wee bit about uh, it's our weekly uh, section that we do, and it's uh, what's on my telly and what's in my belly. So, we think it would be just, it wouldn't be fair not to ask. No, what's on your telly again. and what's in your belly, Maya? Well, um, well, I got Disney Plus, so I've just been watching Phineas and Ferb. Big fan. I'm a big fan yeah. of Phineas and Ferb. Yeah. And I have not seen. I've not seen that. The music and it's fab. Like it's it's really good. And what age group is that mainly for? Just can I show my kids it, or is it a bit? Definitely show your kids it. Yeah. yeah. I watched yeah. it all the time when I was younger. Yeah, because I, I got uh, Disney Plus a wee while back and we started watching The Simpsons and that's actually six plus as well. But some of it I'm going... Uh, it's a bit... How are they getting away with that? How are yeah. they getting away with that? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah. It's about these two brothers um, who are during the summer, v- summer holidays um, they just come up with so many cool things to do. And yeah. their sister always tries to catch them and get their mum to catch them. But by the time that the mum pays attention, the thing that they were doing, like building a roller coaster in a car park or becoming rock stars, it's over because there's a side part to it where they have a pet platypus who's also a secret agent. It's, it's amazing. Is it, is it animated or is it live action? Animated. animated. Animated, right, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I will put that on my watch list for Disney Plus for the kids. Yeah. Good one. Yeah, I would recommend. <laughs> so, uh, with the non, what's in your belly, Maya? What have you been eating? <laughs> noodles. Just, Just noodles. Just noodles. Yeah. What's your favourite kind of brand of noodles then? Coca noodles. Coca noodles. Yeah, yeah. It seems to be the, the premier choice for noodles. Yeah, I thought not. What flavour though? Vegetable. 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 Yeah. That's disappointing now, you better know, be honest. A, that's like bad. the vegetable ones and the chicken ones. I don't like curry, so. Well, I was hoping for a coconut noodles like advertising or podcast as well, but you've just said that and I think that's gone. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sure, I'm sure the CEO of coconut noodles has been watching our podcast every week, just waiting for oh. us to say about them. And you've just killed. 
I'd Can like to go on. I'd like to go on record as saying I really do like the curry ones. They're one of my favourite. Kind of yeah. uh, so if if you are still interested, you know I've got a large capacity here. I'd be happy to take sponsorship <laughs> and pay for Aye, definitely. So Maya, how are you then? How's lock, How's lockdown been for you? Um, I'm getting there. I mean, it's a bit, depends on the day. Some days I'm motivated to do work and stuff, and then other days I'm just lying in my bed watching TV. Yeah. We kind of spoke about it in previous podcasts, that it's okay to have days like that. You know, it's, yeah. we're all going through what is a completely unprecedented thing in the world right now. So just getting through the day as an achievement, uh, and anything on top of that is a bonus. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so... This week's theme is going to be about music, so it's just so handily that we've got you on. You're a member of the music group. Um, mm-hmm. So I suppose like, we could go through our kind of questions. So what was the, what was the first kind of bit of live music you saw that you can remember seeing? I remember my cousin took me mm-hmm. to see Dua Lipa, and that was like my first sort of concert gig that I've seen, but I didn't even know who she was then. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so where was that? Where did you go and see it? Eh, uh, that was in O two. O two, right? Okay. Yeah. and I really enjoyed it. So, that's. Yeah. I mean, that's a fairly good one to be that's quite honest. Really I mean, because like most people, their first gig, it's it's a bit like, oh, <laughs> I went to see this guy and somewhere. Do you know what I mean? I've yeah. got a really embarrassing one actually, which is. <laughs> My mum used to work for uh, tenants, uh, other alcohol as available people. Um, <laughs> but um, so she used to get kind of weird free kind of things sometimes. So amongst those was like getting some very good tickets for tea in the park a lot of the time. But unfortunately, that wasn't my first one. The first one was called the Holston Indie Party. Now, this was way back in the like 90s. So probably... You weren't born, Maya, but maybe no. Lee was a wee bambino or something like that. Maybe Aaron. Uh, around about that time. Um, this was one of these winters where the snow came down so badly and it was so bad, like you were getting a bus into town and you could like play a game of knots and crosses on the inside of the windows. It was right. that woman cold. So <laughs> we had scored these free tickets. I got like about five tickets to call my pals. And we went to the Barrowlands because we'd never been t- to a gig in the Barrowlands. And it was the host and indie party. And none of the bands were, hardly any of the bands were able to show up because the weather was so bad, they all got a thing. So mm-hmm. it was, I believe it was Danny Boyle. Uh, it was Mary's Prayer he was famous for. But the, there was literally about 10 people in the Barrows, including ourselves. <laughs> it was a bit, dire to be quite and honest. that sounds like it had a lot of potential as well as like a, a good wee night in the in the battlelands new yeah. indie bands and things like that yeah. and you and your mates heading out for the first gig at the barras and being like oh it's gonna I be no and we're like, yes <laughs> free tickets everything the good thing there was a really nice offshoot from that was um we actually get quite a uh, chatty to some of the security guards so it was maybe a few weeks later maybe maybe a wee, maybe a month later or something like that a band called Supergrass. So I don't know if you know Supergrass. They were a big Britpop band. Yeah. Where it was a sold out show. And we turned up to the Barrowlands on the off chance that we could maybe get in. And we happened to know the guy we were talking to in the host and indie party saw us and let us come in. We just paid. We paid in. But yeah. we got into basically a sold out show at the Barrowlands. Really? We got to see Supergrass. So every cloud has a silver lining. What about yeah. you, Lee? What was your first gig experience? Uh, what's the next question, Chris? <laughs> and so just what was your first live music experience? Yourself? No, or you... What's the next question? Because I don't really want to tell me. <laughs> oh, no. no Mine not... was, uh... wasn't too bad. If... So what was, what was your... I, well, I grew up with a big sister. Was five years older than me, and <laughs> the disclaimers are coming in here. <laughs> I need these, I need these myself, excuses. I'm breaking myself. <laughs> uh, and two, two of our cousins were also girls. So I grew up with three girls. Um, so my music taste didn't really 
come about until I was old enough to kind of look up music for myself or buy my own CDs or whatever. So my first live music experience was S Club 7 at the SECC. <laughs> aye, yeah, sure. so, aye, and S Club Juniors were there with them as well. So there we go. Two, two, two for the price of one. Aye, yeah. exactly. And how was the gig Lee, at the time? Did you enjoy it at the time? Or were uh, you kind of getting I dragged think, along? It's up to you. I think I loved it, to be honest. I think um, I think I got taken by my, my cousins and my sister, which was quite cool for me. And then we were like at the SEC, which was massive to me, and it was live music, and I'd never seen it before. Um, but I, I don't think it's a story I want to tell too much more about, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I've got, I've been, I've, I swear I'm, I'm much cooler than that nowadays. <laughs> but not much cooler, I'm a wee bit cooler than that. I suppose we'll soon find out, you know, because some of these Aye. questions like are going on to other things, but... Uh, you didn't reach for the stars or anything at the gig? No, no, no I was too wee. No, no, no worries. So, I suppose this question's more kind of pertinent to yourself, Maya, and, and probably me as well, but how did you kind of get started with, like, kind of becoming a musician, so to speak? Um, well, like, I got a ukulele for Christmas, I think, when I was, like, seven. But I sort of, I always said I would learn how to play it, but I never learned how to play it. And then I think it was summer of 2017. And then I just, I found it somewhere and I thought I want to learn how to play this. So then dad said that he knew Scott and the work could tune one. So <laughs> that's kind of how I learned on the ukulele. And then after I got okay at that, then I started playing keyboard and guitar and stuff, so yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of generally how it kind of starts, is having like an instrument in the house, uh, and you just have to kind of put the time in, I suppose, is that? Yeah. It's kind of accurate, it's like anything. If you want to learn something, put the time in. But uh, I remember when you kind of came into the music group and that was your kind of go-to instrument was the ukulele. Yeah. And you've kind of now kind of progressed on to guitar and keyboard and stuff like that. What was your, um, I, saw, I suppose I should probably mention kind of briefly. For me, I, I, I had a kind of like group of friends who all wanted to kind of be in a band. That was a real kind of motivation at the time. This is around about the time where Oasis and War and Britpop is really coming into its own. So we're talking 1994. Um, and for me, we all kind of just agreed to learn a specific instrument that would be complementary to that band. So I learned guitar, my friend learned drums, and my other friend learned bass guitar. And the three of us just spent time in his attic space. He had a bit of an attic space. And I'd, I didn't have a, I only had an electric guitar at the time. I didn't have an amp to plug into it. So really? what we, did, we got like an old hi fi. And we plugged it into the hi-fi and just turned it up full blast to kind of get a distortion effect off of it. Yeah. And uh, we would just rattle away in the attic for hours and hours on end. We'd all agree to learn, learn kind of a song. And that was probably how we kind of get started uh, on our kind of journey, I suppose. What was like your, well, this is a question to both of you guys probably. What was your, um, like first songs that you wanted to learn or first thought songs that you thought would be easy enough to learn? Maya? Um, so everybody on the ukulele, like, I was like, they all learn how to play Riptide first, but I was like, no, I'm not going to learn this one first. So I've got a really cool first song. I've got the fun song from Spongebob. Oh, that was the first ever song that I learned how to play on the ukulele. That's a great and, first song. Yeah. I think Wait, I remember I, you coming in the music group playing that. Yeah, I probably oh, did. That was one of the first ones that you kind of played. <laughs> uh, I think for me, oh God, I'm, I'm, I'm coming off, I'm coming off as kind of, uh, we were huge fans of Nirvana at the time. Okay. Um, so the first song I remember learning, um, just on the guitar myself, was Come As You Are uh, on Nevermind. Um, yeah. It, was, it wasn't in, something we ended up going on to play in that little three-piece kind of uh, 
unit in the, in the attic, but then we would play loads of like Nirvana songs, basically, and loads of Oasis songs, because Definitely Maybe was just out at that point. Yeah. Um, so they, they were the kind of first songs that we would learn. And I suppose I would mention that if you are planning to learn an instrument, it's a really good motivational thing is if you just set your sights on, I want to learn this song okay. because I really like it. That is the best motivation you can have with learning an instrument is, and it improves your skills without even realizing it because you go, nice. wait a minute, I've pushed myself to learn this, this and that. And now I've become a better player as a result of it. And it's, it's a really good methodology, that, in my opinion, you know? Yeah. What would you say, Maya, to that? Uh, I would agree. That's just, I feel like it's better than learning chords first, because when you're learning your chords first, you've not really got an aim with it. You're just, I want to learn a few of these. And then if you've actually got a song to learn, I don't really know how I'm working this. Um, <laughs> Uh, if you've got a song in mind to learn, then it sort of motivates you more to yeah. get to that. That's an end goal. Yeah. That's get it. That. So, probably with non, what, what was your first live performance, Maya? Oh, well, when I was younger, I loved doing like musical theatre and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I don't actually remember my first performance with the music group. I just, so, so I would probably be more talking about when was the first time you remember that you, you picked up an instrument, for example, mm -hmm. or played with other live, sung with other live musicians. I suppose that's the question I'm trying yeah. to ask. Um, well, the first time I sort of played with other people playing instruments was the music group. Right. Uh, I think that's kind of the only place that I've done sort of stuff with a band and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, and I think that was kind of the idea behind the group was we were, first of all, very lucky to have a group of young people that had a really active interest in music and they were yeah. already mostly playing. So mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion, it was the next step was to give them experience playing with other musicians and it's yeah. another learning experience playing with other musicians and you do become kind of uh, better as a result of it, I think, you know. Mm -hmm. It's all very well going to sit in front and saying this is a G chord, this is a D chord, <laughs> but actually that can wear a bit thin after a while. So if you want a yeah. guitar, let us go to a guitar teacher and get tuition one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but I think the music group has and always has been uh, the opportunity to play with other other musicians basically it's providing that opportunity that's the idea yeah. behind it the showcases are great as well because they're usually on a night where the complex is open and it means that you guys are playing in front of your peers basically you're playing in front of people that have maybe never seen you on stage or and it's probably quite good for your guys confidence as well and um, saying to yourself look i can actually do this i'm on a stage in front of my my friends and things like that and other people that come into the complex and um, what else can I do? What's next for me, basically? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think for a lot of people it's, uh, that have came through those showcases, it has been their first kind of experience playing live in front of an audience. So yeah. it's a much more organised fashion than my experience, my first live experience, okay. um, which <laughs> I'll go into it very briefly because I don't want to uh, incriminate myself too much. So we'd spent all our time kind of in the attic, so to speak. So the next logical step was to kind of play in front of an audience. So um, it just so happened that in my school, there was a, a couple of bands kind of going at the time. So we organised a gig in the local Christ the King Church Hall. Now I'm talking about the old church hall, not the one that's there right now. That's the nice big right. one. But uh, the old one, and without going into it too much, it was absolute mayhem. <laughs> mayhem. Um, a window got smashed. Oh, right, okay. uh, um, oh. It was just a wee bit. So that I suppose what I'm trying to say is opportunities to play live in front of an audience aren't actually are quite hard to come by when you're yeah. in the under 18s kind of brand so yeah. um, I think having the youth complex there 
as as an option for young people to come and play is a great option to have. There are, don't get me wrong, there are other places around the city doing that now as well. Um, I have to also mention when I was that when we were first getting that band together, we also played at the youth complex. It had just opened right, okay. time. So that was great experience for us and having those kind of facilities. So it's almost like it's kind of full circle now for me, yeah. you know. I remember an all member of staff playing at the youth complex on one of the band nights. Mm-hmm. Nike played with his band, so he did. Yes, I, I organised that gig. So yeah. you mentioned the band. Um, and I think they t- their audience, they turned up with about 80 people or something. Uh, like yeah. I hadn't cracked a light to anyone that was organ- organising it. All right. of a sudden, it was just... We weren't expecting, like, normally for these, at this point, we were just pulling bands into play. And uh, it was way before the kind of current inception of the music group. Mm-hmm. We were just going, oh, well, you know, 20 people will turn up, it's fine. Uh, yet again, it, it reminded me of back in the day, my first gig experience. Oh, okay. Mayhem. Aye. Mayhem. <laughs> I'm just sticking Mikey in there. But <laughs> as soon as he said the name of the band, I went, oh, I remember you. Yeah, I um, remember you. <laughs> um, they were a good wee band, though. They were a good no, band. they were. Really good. So, yes, leading on. So, I suppose the next kind of thing, and I've kind of touched on it a wee bit, is what is your kind of main influences? And I've kind of split this into kind of almost like two What's your kind of influences and maybe something kind of more contemporary that you're listening to? So we'll start with, what's your kind of influences? It can be anything in the past, you know? Like in music or? Musical um, influences, yeah. Yeah. Specifically. Uh, Well, my dad's a big fan of David Bowie, as a lot of people know. Um, So he would play a lot of that, like, whenever it was a, a family party or whatever, and he'd always be the DJ. Yeah. So um, I kind of grew up knowing those songs, knowing of them. But then um, one day I just kind of sat down and listened to them. I was like, oh, these are really good. <laughs> yeah. So... I think you can go wrong with David Bowie, Maya. Yeah, I don't think so. It's a very good musical upbringing. Is there anything else personally that you, you've gravitated towards now? that you've kind of formed your own opinions on music, like any classic things, maybe not so much that you were brought up with, but maybe yeah. something you've discovered. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. Normally I'll just, I don't know, I'll get like recommended songs on my, on my playlist or whatever. And I'll, some of them are old and some of them are more new. And um, if I like it, I'll just add it to my playlist and I'll end up knowing yeah. all the words to it in a few days. So. I think it's quite, you're kind of touching on something there as well, because I think the way that people listen to music these days is a completely different um, kind of experience to maybe what it was like for me when I was your age. So we would, you know, we would go out to the CD shop and buy the album and and that would be, we'd have a limited amount of things to listen to. So you would you would zero in on these things and you would really listen and over and over and over again. And I mentioned, I touched upon it myself, saying that Nirvana is a huge influence and still remains a huge influence to me. And it's it's came in quite yeah. handy with the music group because there's a lot of members in the music group that also like Nirvana. Uh-huh. So, so it's <laughs> yeah. kind of like our kind of crossover, you know, with uh, all the kind of con- more contemporary kind of acts that they like and stuff that I like. But um, the Beatles were a big influence for me back in the day. It was like I had a a kind of light bulb moment. I was playing a gig in town. We were only about, you know, 15, 16. And then um, my brother, my oldest brother, he was at the gig. Um, and this band came on and started playing this song. And I was going, what's that song, Mark? What is that? That's amazing. And it was uh, the Beatles, I Want You. It's off of Abbey Road. He went, well, my boy, this is the Beatles. <laughs> so that that uh, Christmas, it was uh, the I got the album and the guitar tablature book, uh, and that was me away with it, you know. <laughs> so, uh, what have you been listening to recently, Maya? Uh, is there anything that's kind of floated your boat recently? Well, um, I'm a huge fan of Rex Orange County. Mm-hmm. Um, I've 
been listening to him for like two years or something. I don't really know how long, but he's just, I, I feel like he's sort of what brought me into music because before I was listening to all this sort of like pop stuff and electronic stuff and it just, I was trying to figure out what was sort of different between them and why I liked one of them more than the other and it was more that you could hear like the instruments that he played whereas yeah. a lot of it's more electronic mm-hmm. um, and that just sort of motivated me to learn his songs on instruments because it was a lot easier than you know, sort of seeing him playing them, I don't know what I'm going on about. No, 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 it's, it's yeah. definitely that. It's just, that's, I think that's what I was alluding to earlier on. There's something that sometimes it just reaches out to you and pulls you in, yeah. and that's it. It's completely out with your control almost. That's you, you're obsessed mm-hmm. with that specific thing. I've, <laughs> yeah, I have that experience myself still, you know, and it, it might not be anything contemporary, but it might be something like last October, I went, and realised when I was in I was in holiday in Berlin and I heard a, a Talking Heads song, and mm-hmm. I just suddenly realised that point. Oh my God, the Talking Heads are like the best band in the absolute world right now to me, <laughs> and I was obsessed with them for about a good few months, you know. So yeah, yeah. what about you, Lee? Is, is there anything? That, I mean, obviously, I don't. I know you don't play music or, no. or are a musician, but it's a fairly universal. Is there anything that really influenced you or shaped your kind of taste in music? Uh, I listen to a lot of music. Um, my, growing up, my mum and dad listened to a bit of music, but my sister really loved music. And she got me into like, kind of emo rock. I was into when all my mates were listening to like, hardcore and hardstyle and all that. Um, so she, she uh, we also like Red Hot Chili Peppers. She took me to Hamden to see them when I was about 11 or something um, and then I started kind of finding my own feet and listening to what I wanted to listen to um, and going back and I really liked the stuff in the 90s so I like um, Oasis and Stone Roses things like that um, and then well growing up in my house my dad loves Elvis so I think Elvis is one of my favourites ever and my granddad loves Johnny Cash so that's He's also a favourite of mine. Um, so that's that's kind of stuff that shaped my music taste to go kind of rock. And a lot of my pals did listen to kind of, as my, I was saying, a lot of electronic stuff, a lot of pop stuff. Mm-hmm. Whereas I was wanting to listen to guys who had mastered an instrument and had made their own songs and written their own lyrics. Um, yeah. Because I think it's such an amazing talent. And if you can play one instrument or if you can play twin instruments or if singing is such an amazing talent as well um, and I, I'm not saying the people in the pop charts aren't talented but I just find people who are musically treat, uh, better with instruments and things like that and create their own music it appeals much more to me um, to be honest so that's probably what shaped my, my music taste um, things like Elvis Presley then through the years and a the 90s, Stone Roses, Oasis, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're all good. I mean, all really strong kind of choices as, as well. And I think all, one of the things I would kind of stress to everyone is it's we're not just saying if, if it's not good guitars on it, then it's no good. There are some no. really good examples of electronic music out there as well. And yeah. there's, good, yeah. there's sometimes really good examples where they blend the live band with that as well. And I think that's yeah. one of the kind of optimum is having the best of both worlds but one of the questions I wanted to ask you Maya knowing that you you played a kind of starring role in the uh, show we did in the youth (laughs) complex at uh, Christmas Mm -hmm. um, what is easier something like that or playing um, playing in a band for example so you've had an experience of both things Uh uh-huh I would say definitely doing a sort of a more acting like musical theatre and stuff because you know you're playing a character so you can kind of it's not you you can kind of act like it's not you that's performing up there it's the Mm -hmm. character that's yeah acting up there whereas when it's you playing an instrument in front of people you know people know who you are and you kind of can't hide that as well as if you're playing a character I suppose that's kind of one of the hints that I gave to because with it being a lot of 
providing a lot of young people with their first kind of performance opportunity in the band. That's one of the things I say is pretend it's not you. You're just a character. You are mm -hmm. a musician. You can call yourself by a different name. Yeah. Given that just that wee bit of separation between you and the audience means that actually your performance is more confident. You're more comfortable with, within your own self as well. Mm -hmm. It's something that I've used in particular when I've had like singing roles within bands is almost being another character in it. It makes it easier. Mm -hmm. I think it comes over a lot better as well, you know. So And you see that in a lot of music that we hear, like the people on stage aren't the people off stage. Yeah. You yeah, see that a lot. There's there's so many who change the persona. David Bowie's a massive one. Um, and exactly, you were mentioning yeah, Bowie absolutely. and he had so many characters and um, and it it helps the music as well, I suppose. Um, but that probably, like you're saying, it probably helped the musician in the first place, being what he wanted to be at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I would absolutely agree with that. And um, David Bowie is a, a really good example of that because it's it was a very visual thing with David Bowie. It was yeah. like the the stages of his career. You can tell what album he's releasing just by looking at what he was wearing and what he yeah. looked like at the time. So he was an absolute master chameleon. There's been Others since then, like Madonna and stuff like that, as we invented ourselves on numerous occasions. Uh, yes. And there's others, I'm sure, you know. But yeah, no, it's, it's an interesting thing to think about. I believe that you've got a section um, that you want to go through, Lee, and it's uh, all yeah. I've been told is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Is 5, it? 4, 3, 2, 1. I've, yeah. I've called it. So I'm going to give you five and then give you something that you need, need to name five of for name four of them and so on. So it's just asking you guys, and I'll, I'll maybe put in my answers as well. Um, so first one would be your five favourite bands ever. So put it to Maya first. Um, oh, you're on the spot. Oh no, we should have said <laughs> this before it. Um, well, Walls is probably my top favourite band at the moment. <laughs> um, okay. The Talking Heads, I like them, and I don't even think I can think of five bands. Um, Blur, well, oh, yeah, I like a few songs from them. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think, can I grab my playlist? Can I see? <laughs> well, I mean, I can go through five that off the top of my head, so I've already mentioned some of them to be honest. So, yeah, Nirvana. Mm -hmm. Big time, the Beatles, yup. Uh, recently, the Talking Heads, David Bowie. Um, I'm a big fan of the Doors as well. I love the Doors. Okay. It's just a band that isn't much talked about these days. But um, so, so they're like five I could mention off the top of my head. But there's a lot more than that. So yeah. Are you doing my get your playlist <laughs> yeah, I've got, <laughs> I've got my son's team so much. I've got my bands now. Um, Boy Pablo, they're they're really good. They're from Norway, but okay. their songs are really good. And the Strokes, I like them. The Strokes, good. The Strokes are excellent. They're excellent Aye, band. Good answers. Uh, mine would probably be. I've mentioned a couple of them as well. I'm the same as you because I saw the Stone Roses are my favourite. Um, Oasis. Uh, the View, the band from Dundee, uh, I've seen them countless times and they're just, I think the live shows make the music better for me. Um, Kasabian, I love Kasabian and my fifth would probably be Arctic Monkeys. Arctic Monkeys are good, I'll give you yeah. a vote on that as well. So number four, Maya, I don't know if you want to be asked first, have you got your playlist ready? Oh, yeah. Number four is your four favourite solo artists. Oh, well, Rex Orange County, uh, Gus Stafferton, he's really good, um, David Bowie, and this guy, I cannot pronounce his name whatsoever, he's like, he's from Thailand, but he sings in English, but um, is I can't pronounce it, it's Pum Vipurit or something, Okay. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. He's Very just, eclectic taste of music, Maya. There's, uh -huh. You're hearing different like genres and all that when you're speaking, which is quite cool. It's good to yeah. listen to different genres and different styles of music and things like that. Yeah. What about you, Chris? Who are your favourite? I'm going to struggle favorite. a wee bit with this because I'm always very much focused on the kind of band okay. unit and stuff like that. But 
mentioned David Bowie, that's a given. Um, God, I like a bit of Neil Young, if that's, he's a solo guy, so... Uh, yeah. God, I'm going to struggle with the kind of solo guys, because as I said, it's, uh, it's something that... Um, I like, I, I'm just trying to pull ones out there now. Miles Kane's pretty good. Oh, yeah. They're quite kind of crossover Kane. with the Arctic Monkeys, quite pally. Um, and so, guys, Jesus. Kayla Minogue, you were telling me, weren't you? It's, well, <laughs> she's one of your favourites. You've got all her albums. Any man of my age um, <laughs> is going to be on automatic go to. So, yeah, let's, let's go with it. I'm not going to struggle okay, against then. that one, Lee. Right, okay. <laughs> I would say well, I've mentioned two of mine as well, um, Elvis and Johnny Cash, uh, just because my dad and my granddad, that's their favourites, and I love their music, and I think it's timeless as well, their music, I think. Going back to what you were saying about Nirvana and some of the music, I love them nowadays, and Nirvana weren't a thing when they were, even when they were born, they weren't, they weren't around. Um, so music is timeless, and you can listen, go back and listen to stuff, so Elvis was releasing stuff in the 50s, and so was Johnny Cash, and it's just amazing that we can still listen to it and I appreciate it just now. Um, my last two would probably be I really love Liam Gallagher's solo stuff. Um, I think his albums are great and I've seen him live as well and he's brilliant. And I think I was struggling, I, I looked at this earlier and I was struggling between two. Um, Jake Bug uh, and Jamie T. I'm, I'm a big fan of both of them. Uh, I, think, I think Jake Bug just, just pipped some of the post for me. Yeah. So three, we're on to three now. So I'm going to ask you, what are your three favourite gigs you've attended? Oh, well, I go first. Go for yeah, it. go for it. Yeah. For the guests. Uh, Gus Apperton, Rex Orange County, and Wallows, and I've mentioned all of them before. <laughs> so but, where did you yeah. see them? Where did you see them? Um, I saw Gus Apperton and Wallows in the garage. And Gus Dapperton was sort of, that was like my first gig that I went to that was, you know, sort of smaller and like, yeah. I kind of knew who he was. And um, Wallows, it was just in the garage and Rex Orange County was the Barrowlands. Oh, right, okay. And they were all great. <laughs> What's your favourite uh, venue you've been to? This isn't a question from 54321, but just because you're mentioning those venues. Um... Probably the garage. I've just yeah. seen the most people there, so I like Okay. Fair enough. Chris? <laughs> so best gigs, I suppose. I think this is kind of a subjective question because sometimes it, it, it's not about who you're seeing. It's about the headspace you're in at the time and you're ready yeah. to see that specific thing. But there was one time I went to see a band, this was way back in the day, a band called Manson. Manson, uh, Attack of the Grey Lantern was the name of the album. And I went in with like modest expectations for it, and they absolutely blew me away. It was in the right. Barrowlands again, and it was a fairly half half full kind of Barrowlands. It wasn't like a uh, you know a kind of full, but they absolutely blew me away, and I was absolutely fanatical over them after that. You know, the album yeah. I was just checking there, and this makes me feel really old. I think the album's roughly coming up for its 25th anniversary now. Which, okay. Oh, it just makes me sad <laughs> saying that. Um, I've been to see numerous, numerous gigs, but, um, and, and, and that's maybe, this isn't maybe the coolest thing again, do you know what I mean? But something that absolutely blew me away. We went to Tea in the Park one year, and it was the year that David Bowie was meant to be playing it, and he pulled out, and really? they had to replace, had to shuffle the kind of lineup around. And the headline act was Moby. Now, Moby isn't really something I would kind of hold up as a huge influence for me, but the gig itself was absolutely spectacular. You know what right. I mean? It was, it was, I don't know if it just happened to be where we were at that point, you know, but uh, yet again, just blew me away. Uh, I think going in with sometimes modest expectations is a really good thing better. because it just, you know, all of a sudden you're like, you know, <laughs> wow, what is this that I'm seeing right now? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, oh, God, I've seen so many. But, um, oh, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to kind of zero in and one. 
I've seen the, uh, I think, seen uh, the Chemical Brothers and uh, the Barrowlands again. Right. You're going to, if you ask me the question, what's my favourite venue? They've, I've answered it for you. The Barrowlands yeah, yeah. a fantastic venue. The Chemical Brothers, because they're used to playing in such large stages that having mm-hmm. them enclosed in this space mm-hmm. was just like, whoa. You <laughs> know? And the light show was absolutely amazing as well. So, so I'll, I'll just pull that one out there. Aye, no, brilliant. When was that? When was the Chemical Brothers oh, at Paris? God, it was back, you're talking early 2000s, probably. Okay, right. Brilliant. Um, mine's would be, I've got an advantage over you guys because I made these questions, so I've already oh, got them. Already <laughs> <before>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so on my 21st birthday, we were in Manchester uh, at the Etihad Stadium to see the Stone Roses, and it was just perfect. The sun was shining. Manchester's like my second favourite city after Glasgow. Stone Roses are my favourite band and I support Man City as well, which <laughs> makes it even better that it was played at their stadium. So that's my favourite gig. Um, another one would be the Stereophonics. You know, their live performances are brilliant every time we've went to see them. But the most recent one was at the Hydro a week before lockdown, so it was. Um, so we didn't know if it was going to go ahead because football games had been cancelled and things like that. Um, but it went ahead and they were unreal again and I think it, it was the best I've seen them. They made an arena show feel like an intimate gig. That's how good it was. They felt like, it felt, although there's thousands of people in that arena, there was only 20 people watching them. I don't know why it made it like that, but they can just capture a crowd, I think. Um, and then my third favourite, I was stuck for this one because I seen Liam Gallagher last December in the the Hydro and it was excellent and we took Brooke's nephew to his first gig and he loved it um, and that made it out like you says depends what the situation's like as well so that made it a wee bit more special for us but after you mentioned Miles Kane um, as one of your favourite solo artists I've got to say I've seen him at the Barrowlands a couple of years ago was was unreal he came out with like glitter paint on his face and like this cool uh, silver tracksuit and He's somebody who gets the crowd going and he's, you can tell he cares about the music and he cares about the fans. I don't know if you've been to gigs before and people are just up on stage playing because they're getting paid at the end of it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But that time, Miles Kane was like pointing at fans and showing that he had energy and loved the music and things like that. So that made it for me. So that's, that's my three favourite gigs. So Maya, we're only two, we're almost there. So two <laughs> favourite albums of all time. Two favourite albums, oh god. Uh, can I look at my, my playlist? Yes, can, right? <laughs> I'll go ahead the now then, yeah. while, while you're waiting. So, uh, probably a constant for most of my adult life is the Beatles Abbey Road. Okay. Uh, it's got a really, if you've, I'm going to say, if you've not listened to it, but if, if there are people out there that haven't listened to it, please do. There's a, ma- a really great kind of medley towards the end of the album where the songs all just lead into each other and it builds to a kind of crescendo. So it's, it's for the time, 1969 the album was out and it's just, it's a production masterpiece. It's, it was pushing the boundaries of production back then. And I would dare to say that it's just put, it was still pushing the boundaries of people's minds these days. So... I would say that's that's one. Um, if I was going to pick another album just that really represented me and what I'm into, I would say it would be The Doors, Ellie Woman. Uh, it would be hard to narrow down a choice of one Doors album because I love them all. But if I was like, recommending somewhere to start with The Doors, then I would say that's the place to start. It's a big, dirty blues extravaganza. It's that's yeah, very special to me. Nice yeah. one. Okay, um, Hi, have you got yours? Yeah, I've got mine. Okay, happy days. Yeah, my first one is Apricot Princess by Rex Orange County because that's the first album that I sort of listened to from him, and it's just really good. It's really sort of diverse, all different styles of music and all different instruments and stuff. It's just really good. Yeah. And. Uh, my second one is When You Think You're a Comic by Gus Dapperton. And I just really like it because 
he's such this sort of it's quite like when we were talking about how musicians make this sort of character that they play like uh, Gus Dapperton's this big loud character he's got like this signature bowl cut and everything but it's just it's really cool and it's just quite unusual Brilliant. Give them a listen. I've yeah, them quite a few times, so I think we're it's incumbent on myself and Lee to have a listen to these two acts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. And my two are kind of boring because they just go with like two of my favourite bands. Um, the Stone Roses self tape debut album. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's, it's so cool. The, the instruments on it are great. And I don't think there's a song that you can skip on it either. Um, the way that Don't Stop is the reversal of Waterfall is brilliant as well and Squire actually learned how to play that, <laughs> play Waterfall backwards so that they can play Don't Stop Live. Um, aye, that's brilliant. Uh, and the other one is definitely maybe, you mentioned it earlier Chris. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's like album. It's um, not, I mean a lot of people go like, it's almost like you kind of get stereotyped when you mention anything relating to Oasis but yeah. I mean for me Oasis definitely maybe is like a really important album in the stages of Britpop. It was like yeah. kind of setting, it was like putting the foot in the ground saying, right, this is it here. This is kind of what Britpop is. So ha- highly influential for me as well, I would say, and still stands the test of time. Uh, I would I, I, I would have to say that I'm not really into Oasis much after that. I like the next mm-hmm. album. It was good. It wasn't as good as definitely. And then I kind of lost it after that with Oasis. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's a great album, Lee. Yep. So number one is probably, I think, the hardest question of them all. Um, your favourite song ever. <gasps> <laughs> is that not a question you ask musicians? I don't know. I'm it's not, it's difficult because it's, it, you change. I, I wish you, if it was five songs and it would maybe be a bit yeah, easier, yeah. you know. But I know uh, this would get harder as it went on, but one favourite song it's, is it's very hard to pick. Are you still thinking the now, Maya? Or do you want me to go first, or would you can, like to go? Can you go first? I'm going to need to think about it. Damn you. Damn you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, um, so, I mean, I'm just pulling things out of the air, so to speak. But if I was picking, like, I'd, I mentioned I mentioned that in, um, like, recently, one of the kind of songs, like, seeing this, that band play that Beatles song. So... Yeah. And that really reached out to me at the time, and it still reaches out to me today, you know. Um, so I'm going to go with that because it's okay. it ties it all in a nice, neat, neat bow. I want you by the Beatles on Abbey Road album. It's amazing bit of blues, man. <laughs> you got yours, Maya? No, well, my <laughs> favorite song changes every week. Yeah. What's currently your favorite song then? Um. Probably prune your talk funny by Gus Dafferton. <laughs> but this guy um, must be good. <laughs> I'm, I'm checking yeah, it out. <laughs> he's really good. Um, no, normally me, my mum, and dad were sitting on a Friday night in the kitchen listening to music. We take turns passing around the phone yep. to put on a song, and um, every couple songs, uh, we'll say, "Oh, this is in my top five songs," but you'll say about ten of them. So <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It is hard. Yeah. I left it to the end. Um, but I'm no musician like you guys. I'm no talented <laughs> like that, so I can just pick a song easily. That just. But I think mine's kind of goes like yours, Chris, and it's where I first heard it and what it meant to me. So mine's is this is the one by the Stone Roses off their, their debut album, and it was before my mum's fortieth uh, birthday party. I heard it, and I was on YouTube and. It was on, and I, I love football as well, and, it, and my team were going for um, a league championship the next day. And somebody had made a compilation of all their goals throughout the season to this is the one. And the way it fitted was just like, this is the one. I was like, what? This song is amazing. And then um, that, that actually got me into the Stone Roses after that. Um, but I, I, would, I would go for that. And when I've heard it live, when I've been to see the Stone Roses as well, it's just... Still gives me gives me goosebumps. So that was that was five four three two one. That was hard for yeah. <laughs> because I hadn't hadn't pre warned you guys, which was a wee bit unfair. <laughs> I had all the answers in my back pocket already, um, but I think 
We've got a couple more things to cover. We've got, have we got a question from Scott? Chris. So Scott was uh, asking, so Scott uh, from uh, my co-worker in the music group submitted a question of saying, what is your go-to lockdown tune, album or band? And I've got a feeling I know what my is. is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, no, actually, you don't know. Okay. What... <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm actually a really big fan of musical theatre. And um, my favourite musical is Hamilton. Okay. And that musical is just, it's, it's basically the story of one of the founding fathers of America, Alexander Hamilton. But yeah. it's told in rap and hip hop and all different styles of music. And because the musical is just made, up, made out of songs, there's no sort of, well, there's acting in it, but there's no like lines in it. Um, I just shuffle that, and <laughs> that's just Thanks my favorite. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. For me, uh, I would say it's a, a relatively recent band. Not, I mean, say relatively within the last ten years. I'm trying to get to um, is uh, Metronomy, and the album is the English Riviera. Um, it's we mentioned it earlier on about get hitting that sweet spot between live performance and synthesizers. And this very much does that. It's, it's just the right and nice halfway point between the two. Up until this album, this act had just mainly been a kind of synth kind of uh, electro performers. Uh, right. And it was at this point that they started pulling uh, musicians and formed a kind of band, a four piece band unit. And uh, it's just an excellent, from start to finish album you know it was nominated for a mercury music award the year it came out it never won it but uh it's i, I tend to kind of go use that as a barometer because most of the mercury music award nominations are usually fairly decent you know yeah. there's at least a couple of those acts every year that you go yep that's pretty good you know yeah and the bands usually go quite far as well even if they haven't won mm -hmm. the award the, yeah that's the right yep. nominated go quite far um, for me, mine's isn't an album. Mine's is probably an artist that I've been listening to a lot. So last week, I uh, don't know if you've seen it, Maya, but what was on my tele last week was a show called Community. And Donald Glover stars in that, who is also Childish Gambino. Um, and I've been listening to a lot of him. And I think it ties in a lot of his songs have a message about um, the Black Lives Matter movement as well. So it's all kind of tied in for me this week. Um, don't know if it's like subliminally I've come to him on because of what's all happening and what I'm watching on telly and things like that. Um, but I liked him a couple of years ago and then you know one of the ones you forget about an artist and you haven't listened to him for a few years so going back to listen to Childish Gambino was brilliant. And he's good as well because he's got all different styles of songs. So he brought out like um, 3005 which was kind of like electric rap and then he does like hip hop. Um, Gangster rap with kind of this is America and it's got gospel in it and then Redbone was kind of like funk so uh, he's good he's good to listen to if you want to want to wee change your genres and things like that um so I think our next part is and I don't know if you've been prepped on this Maya so that's a wee bit unfair if I've done that as well but I'm going to be quizzing Chris every week on the podcast and we thought it would be good to have a test the guest or Chris versus our guest. <laughs> so if you're up for that, I've got a wee quiz here where you'll go head to head against Chris. Um, and obviously this is a music edition of a podcast, so it's got to be a music quiz. Oh God! So <laughs> <laughs> it's front men or women. Okay. Is that okay, Maya? I, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> well, I'll give you the the lead singer of a band, and you just tell me the band. Okay. Okay. Do I go first <laughs> yeah. or second? Uh, I'll go second. Go second, okay. Chris, first frontman, Robert Plant. Led Zeppelin. Okay, one nil. Maya, are you ready? <laughs> oh, poor Maya, she's looking good. You got this, you got this. <laughs> Freddie Mercury. Oh, Queen. Where we go. One each, you've got a, you've got a point. Happy days. Chris, this is a bit unfair because I'd written this before you said what you said earlier in the podcast. Okay. Jim Morrison. 
That wars. <laughs> <laughs> Maya, you're yeah. two one down. You've got to get this one. Alex Turner. Oh, Arctic Monkeys. There we go. Two each. Ooh. Chris, Debbie, Harry. Blondie. Well done, three two. Oh, he's just wiping them away now. He's like oh, Blondie. <laughs> Give me something harder here, Lee. Good, Blondie's amazing. Uh, Maya, Liam Gallagher. Oh, Oasis. Well done. Three each. This is maybe too easy. Maybe give, need to give you some other ones. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Joe Strummer. Uh, the Clash. The Clash. Four, three. Maya, Matt Healy. Uh, I don't know. Uh, give it a guess. It's a more modern band. Can I give her a song? Uh, I, I I think I know who it is, but I might not be right. So you go for it. You go for the clue just to confirm if I'm right or wrong. Sing a song called Chocolate. Oh God, no, I don't know. Do you want to try and steal the point then, Chris? Is it Muse? It's no, no, no. It's Matt Bellamy, isn't it? Oh, it no. is Matt Bellamy. Aye. Balls. <laughs> it's the 1975. Oh, I would never oh, have got right. that. I would never have got that. <laughs> Uh, Chris, I think aye, this this will be a winner if you get this. So it's 4-3 right now. If you get this, it'll be 5-3. Rivers Kiomo. Sorry? Rivers Kiomo. I've no idea. No? No. Maya, do you want to try and steal the point? Do you know this one? Nope. <laughs> it's Weezer. I like Weezer, but I would, I would <laughs> never have got that. <laughs> so, Maya, you need this to tie up. Chris is still the reigning champion of the milk, uh, the milk round. Billy Joe Armstrong. I feel like I'm going to get judged, but I don't know this. <laughs> really He's got a steel finger on the buzzer. What's your guess? Go on, have a swipe at it. I mean, I, I don't know, so... Take a guess at a pop-punk band from the 90s and 2000s. I still wouldn't know. Pressure, pressure. Yeah. Right, Chris, do you know? Green Day. Green Day, well done. Yeah. 5 3 Chris, he's still the reigning champion for the Milk Round podcast. Good effort, but Maya. Some some of them were maybe a bit unfair. I should have tried Gus Dapperton or Rex Orange County. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put them in for the next quiz. Okay. Um, I think that's all we've got for this week. Um, just want to thank you for coming on and, and letting us speak to you about music. Um, it's something new for us to have a wee guest and, yeah. and have somebody else to talk to because Chris is getting bored of my portal. Uh, <laughs> Um, so no, we really appreciate you coming on. Thanks very much. Um, and this Thanks is just the thing. Me. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I did. She got to say that we made it. Say that Absolutely. Before. Wait till <laughs> we stop recording. She thought that's terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> but um, if anyone wants to get a hold of us, our social medias are uh, Kelly Youth Complex staff on Twitter. It's Youth Complex CYC. Instagram Youth Under Slash Complex. And TikTok Kelly Youth Complex, and our email address is cycyouthteam at gmail.com. Uh, please, if you're watching us right now, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. It really helps with our exposure to the wider community and all that sort of stuff. Anything yeah. else to add, Lee? Uh, no, I think that's us. I that was really enjoyed that. Um, so, just thanks again to Maya. Yep, thanks very much, Maya, and we'll see everyone next week. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.